morning, everybody. I'd like to start with two questions. The first is, I'd like a show of hands. The question is, how many of us sitting here in this room have a deep conviction that India is destined for greatness? I'd really like a show of hands. Thank you. Now, the second question is, and I'd really request you to give me a show of hands again. How many of us have a deep conviction that it is us who will shape that destiny of this nation? Thank you. The starting point for my journey was a realization that destiny of a nation is some of all destinies of individuals in that country. And if India is destined for greatness, then you cannot have one third of the children not having schools to go to, and so on and so forth. It meant that our parliament had great leaders, that our businesses had great leaders, that we had great artists, great teachers. In a nutshell, we had people across all spectrums, starting from villages and slums in the country to the parliament and corporate boardrooms, a country of great people. When we started out on understanding how it is that we can do this, how do we get to a point where people who might be in a village or a slum are not dependent on people like us to go in to their places and then help them out? How can we enable them? How can we enable people across all levels to find greatness? We just recently had this movie, Three Idiots, talking to us about pursuit of excellence versus pursuing success. The question took us to a slum. In, in Hyderabad, and we adopted it, and we said, all right, in five years' time, we will completely transform this community and enable leadership in this community as well. It was challenging. It has been four years since we started, and we have found a framework that allows us to do that. I'll come to that in a moment, but uh, recently, as I was sitting back and trying to understand how is it that I will share what I've been doing over the last four years with people in this auditorium today, uh, and, and I was having conversations with a friend of mine, and it suddenly struck me that what we have been doing has been with us culturally for 4,000 years, more than 4,000 years now. And the word is Veda. Veda as it stands for knowledge and wisdom. How do we have people who operate out of a sense of deep understanding, knowledge and wisdom, and when they act, great results manifest themselves. It has been with us for 4,000 years now. There was another beautiful word I came across when I was having this conversation called Vedana. And uh, apparently, the word Vedana stands for pain. But a friend of mine who has been through Vipassana tells me that uh, Vedana actually stands for experience. That's what it stood for 4,000 years ago. And it is because human beings have a tendency to remember painful experiences longer and have clarity of that experience. And joyful experiences recede into the foggy realms of our memories that today, the, the word that meant experience, Vedana meant experience, now stands for pain. But he, this is exactly what we do. Those who are interested in discovering their greatness, no matter where they come from, be it the slums of this country or the villages, or be it children from government schools, or people studying in ISB, or aspiring to study at ISB, or uh, executives in, uh, in companies who wanted to grow up the leadership ladder, or people aspiring to be politicians and political leaders of this country. I'll talk about two instances uh, of, of how we do this. First is uh, Rasulpura. We today have about 13 people from this community. Most of them have not completed the 10th standard. They work across five areas, education, livelihood, health, water environment and sanitation, governance and democracy. They engage with their own challenges. They learn how to cope with their circumstances. They figure out solutions to their challenges. And over the last four years, what they have succeeded in doing is six students from this community have entered into engineering. There, are, uh, there is a development center which is run, managed by people from this community that is dealing with children with disabilities. There is a computer center. There is an, there is an English language center. There is a library. 
There are 500 women who are in thrift and credit cooperatives who are saving, uh, whose savings, collective savings over the last two years amounts to about $7,000. And all of this, when it started out two years ago, was driven by three people. And today, there are 13 fellows of Bhumi who are learning leadership and implementing it in trying to deal with the challenges of their own community. Second, we have a tutoring mentoring program. When we started out this organization, we were looking at how do we address the challenge of child labor in this country. And uh, we realized the value proposition of child labor is far uh, superior to the value proposition of education. Because if you went to a government school, there are no, no teachers. And uh, that leads to lack of interest in pursuing studies. There are more exciting things to do, like gambling and jumping across the airport wall and making money, etc., etc., etc. So if this value proposition was to be changed, it meant that these children were given support in two areas. One, inspired teaching. Two, support. Telling them that there is somebody who believes in their ability to be good and great. And we did not want to do this in a volunteering framework. What we did is invited college students or young professionals who wanted to go on a leadership journey. We put them in contact with the children from government schools. Today, this program is serving about 1,200 government school children. And uh, these mentors and tutors use this opportunity of engagement with these children as a leadership learning opportunity. It is extremely challenging to work with a government school child. A, it, he or she comes from a very difficult circumstance. B, you have to engage with the teachers, the school administration. C, you have to engage with the community. D, you have to engage with bureaucracy. So it's very, fairly complex. And if you're committed to doing this, then you have to overcome your own barriers. If we want to get, get a child to believe in himself or herself, and he or she is coming from a very difficult circumstance, you have to first have that conviction in yourself. It's only then will you be able to inspire the same in others. You have to be able to overcome uh, uh, questions from parents as to why are you going to a slum or a government school child? Can't you go to a computer, computer course? Fairly personal, social, uh, and systemic challenges, as they are overcome over a period of 10 months, the outcome is twofold. One is I myself grow out of this engagement. I emerge far taller, and there is somebody else who's been supported. So a community gets uplifted. So this is exactly what is happening. These 13 fellows of Rasulpura who may not have completed their 10th class are uplifting their own community over a period of three years, and they do it by overcoming these barriers. They acquire a personal character over these three years. They acquire skills and tools in leadership as they do it. And they apply it in uplifting their communities. So the outcome is twofold, uplifted communities and an inspired leader. Thank you.